Greetings, retro lover. This is Ethan, aka the Ghost Mall, coming to you once again from my home studio here. And I'm really excited because it is Wednesday again, which means I'm back with another Work in Progress Wednesdays video. And in this series, what I like to do is to just bring you a glimpse inside of my home studio as I work on something which is as of yet incomplete, in the hopes that you can take what I'm doing and maybe glean some insights or tips and tricks or some hacks or just some kind of lessons that might apply to you as you are working on your own music, particularly if, like me, you produce retrowave or synthwave or retro-inspired music. So in this episode, I wanted to share with you a piece of music I'm working on, which is about maybe halfway complete is all. And despite being only about halfway complete, I was really pleased and surprised to see that the work in progress version of this track, which is tentatively titled Reflections, uh, when I posted it to SoundCloud, just sort of as a sample of what I'm working on right now, the attention that it got really surprised me, pleasantly surprised me. It, it racked up over like a thousand plays and about 60, 60 likes over on SoundCloud in less than a week from the time when I posted it. And that's pretty unheard of for, for my music with the Ghost Mall. So I was pleased. And it led me to think, well, there must be something going right with this work in progress. So I wanted to bring it to you all here on the YouTube channel. Especially, I wanted to share maybe three lessons that I gleaned from making something like this, which is, as you can see, just a small number of tracks here, and yet that people are digging. And number one is that, as I've mentioned in a number of previous videos already on this channel, really, simplicity is so powerful. Simplicity can be one of your greatest assets and tools as a songwriter and as a music producer. And more specifically, there are kind of two reasons why that I think this song illustrates. One is that simplicity allows you to have a great sense of space in your music. And another is that simplicity allows for you to really take advantage of interesting textures and timbres with the individual instruments. And I believe that if you pay attention to having a great immersive sense of atmosphere and space in your music, and every element within that space has its own personality or character, that your music is really going to be attractive and immersive to your listener. So before continuing on to talk about that more and to break this down, I'm going to play it back for you from beginning to end so you can get a sense for what it's all about. And um, this tune is an instrumental. I intend it to remain an instrumental. It's kind of a sequel to another track that I put out uh, last year called After Hours, which was a sort of down-tempo, chill, retro-inspired, synth-based kind of a tune. And this is very much in the same vein. So if you're familiar with that song or not, I did a full-length breakdown on this channel, which I'll be happy to link to previously of After Hours. And yeah, this is kind of a sequel to that. So I'll play it back for you. This is a work in progress called Reflections. Then we'll break it down into pieces and talk more about the lessons we can learn from it. Here goes.
All right. So there you have it. That is my new work in progress here at the Ghost Mall called Reflections, a very ambient, chill, retro wave instrumental with just a handful of elements so far. And um, again, I intend to leave it that way. I intend to leave it with a very small number of instruments. And uh, I will talk to you more toward the end of this video about how I plan to finish it up, what I think needs to be expanded upon, what I think needs to be fixed, and what I think needs to be changed and finalized before I release this as an actual full release. But because it's work in progress Wednesday, you get to see behind the scenes. And again, the key lessons I really want you, when you're watching this, to take away from this is that you don't have to have 100 tracks or 50 tracks or even 30, 35 tracks in a song for it to be great. In fact, there's really no correlation <laughs> between the number of tracks in your song and its greatness subjectively or objectively, however you want to quantify or measure it. The fact is, is that some of my simplest tunes have been the ones that folks have responded the best to. And I, I think that it's not in spite of it, it's because of it. And again, it comes back in large part, I think, to those two things I want to point out. First, about space. So what do I mean by space? Space in your music exists in at least two different dimensions. One is across time, and the other is with regard to the frequency spectrum of your music. So in terms of space within time, of course, when we talk about musical subdivisions, that's exactly what we're discussing. So for example, if you take this piano part here, mostly these are whole notes. Chords played whole notes, and they sustain throughout whole bars. And what that means is that you get the initial attack of the sound, but then it lingers. Or if it doesn't linger, if it's a short sound without a lot of decay or sustain to it, you've created this space in here for something else to shine through. Now, it's very, very easy, dangerously easy, I would say, to crowd the space in your song in terms of time and also in terms of frequency, but I'll get there in a minute, to the point where the listener doesn't really know what I'm supposed to be hearing, what I'm supposed to be paying attention to right now, because as I mentioned in other previous videos, our attention is a limited resource. Cognitive psychology has proven this. There's only so much new information each of our brains can take on board at a given moment and only so much that we can attend to at one time. So if you have a bunch going on simultaneously, you're in trouble. It's better to leave some space and have parts alternate within your music. Here's another good example. So this is another part where it's just really sparse dyads here and plenty of space in between to let something else, particularly I wanted the snare to have a lot of room here. And I'm going to talk about the instruments in depth here so you'll get to know what I used and why when I talk about timbre and texture and character. But space is only possible, leaving space in your music is only possible if you're willing to let it be simple. So that's space over time. And then there's space within the frequency spectrum, which is sort of like from top to bottom. If we think of time from left to right, possibly, or proceeding uh, in that way, then there's this frequency spectrum. Imagine for a moment if you were going to create a simple song even like this right here we've got 11 tracks and really it's five tracks that are part of the drum kit a bass two keyboards a uh, couple of synth or ear candy elements and a melody but think for a moment if you said okay i'll keep it simple i'm only going to have 11 tracks in my arrangement and they were all kick drums <laughs> first of all that wouldn't be very interesting and i don't think you could necessarily call it a song but more importantly you would have overcrowded the low end of your frequency spectrum while neglecting the mid-range, the upper mid-range, the top end, and everything else. You need to have an adequate representation in your music of all of the components of the frequency spectrum and, at the same time, not overcrowding any region. A lot of times stuff that we talk about as problems that people consider, well, I need to fix this in mixing, like really congested in the lower mids, well, maybe that's just because you've got, you know, a piano and an organ and a guitar playing low in the register all at the same time. And what you've got is too many elements in the same frequency range at the same time. And you're overcrowding that space, so to speak, that frequency space in your music. And so, yeah, so in this tune, um, like I said, I have a drum kit, a bass, a piano, a string machine. Uh, this says it's a pad, but it's really just some synth dyads some really cool ambient vocal samples, and a bell kind of synth for the lead. And again, I'm going to talk to you a bit more about their textures and timbres in a minute, but I did want to highlight 
that in terms of space, I've left plenty of room within the musical subdivisions in time for things to shine through. And I've also tried to leave so that I don't have any great number of instruments or elements in the same frequency range overcrowding any of those. All right, so that's that's about space. Keeping things simple can allow you to have great space within your song. And another advantage of that is that one of the things that occupies that space between the notes that are played are your ambiences, that is your reverbs and your delays. And without that, music sounds not only artificial, but really dead. But if you do what some mixing engineers call mixing the ambience, which is to consider your instruments, you know, their own elements, but also to consider the reverbs and the delays their own elements and mix them as if they were their own instruments, then they begin to be able to shine through in the same way as an instrument. But that, again, only is possible if you leave them ample space. All right, so another dimension of this beyond space and simplicity allowing you to have that space is texture and timbre. Now let's listen really quickly before I talk more to some of these individual elements. I'll tell you what they are, and then I'm gonna to talk to you about why I selected them. So at the start of the song, the first thing that comes in is this string machine. This is from UVI's String Machines, the first iteration. They're on String Machines 2 now, I think, but as anyone who watches this channel knows fully, I'm a UVI fanboy, I love their stuff. This is a collection of analog string machines from the late 70s, early 80s, and it sounds like this. As you can see, just quarter note pulses there. You get the idea. And so that's one of the two main instruments that comp out the chords. And it definitely doesn't sound like real strings, right? Despite their best efforts and intentions at the time in the late 70s and the early days of analog synthesis and pre-digital synthesis, really, even though they wanted to replicate the sound of a string section with that technology, it wasn't possible. But that said, it's still a really cool and interesting sound. I had one comment on this track. Someone said, well, that sounds a lot like maybe Kate Bush. And I took that as a huge compliment because I love Kate Bush's music. Being a retro wave producer, she's a wonderful, uh, you know, touchstone. And uh, she definitely used these types of instruments as well as early samplers that also tried to um, recreate string sections. But this had a lot of grittiness to it and a sort of pleasing thinness that allowed me to, again, build things above and below it in the frequency spectrum. So that is the first element. Then we have this bass that comes in shortly thereafter. love this sound so much. That is just an excellent virtual analog synth bass. As you can see, it's coming from Native Instruments Massive, which I've mentioned in previous videos is one of my favorite synths for basses. And not just, you know, even though it's a modern digital, uh, that is to say, VST synth, it's really good at mimicking some classic analog sounds. And this is a Wonderful preset from a collection called Colors. Just listen to how resonant that is. Anyway, it's a, it's a selection of presets called Colors by Echo Soundworks, which I got from ADSR Sounds, I believe. One of my favorite collections of massive presets, particularly the basses. And so that provides a nice contrast. It sort of has that thumpy, resonant, analog, bass synth kind of a sound to it. Reminiscent to me of like, the classic poly six sound, but a little bit rounder, a bit bigger. Part of that, again, is that this is not completely dry. It has a reverb on it, a very short reverb. Let's see, I'll A, B that so you can hear. Here's without. Here's with. Almost sounds like a small ambience or a chamber or something. And Again, it, in an arrangement like this, which is fairly sparse, and you want to highlight the spaciousness of it, having a little bit of reverb on the bass is not prohibited. So here are those two together.
All right, let's talk about the drums next. This is one of my absolute favorite parts of the song. And with the Ghost Malls music, because I am so heavily inspired by 80s retro synth pop, usually I use drum machines. But every once in a while, I want to use the sound of an acoustic kit. And in this case, I did so because of the bigness of it. So this kit, well, first here, let's just take it to where the drums drop in and you can listen to this again. It really sounds massive. Solo up the drums. Wow. Just listen to how that kick just punches through and the massiveness of that snare. So this is a, again, a preset kit from XLN Audio's Addictive Drums 2, but in particular, a set of sounds called Fairfax Volume 1. And what this is, is that they recorded a couple of acoustic kits in Fairfax Studio, which is now, it's called now called Fairfax. It was previously Sound City, one of the most famous recording studios in Los Angeles. And along with recording the samples there the, of the kit, they also recorded the room. But most of the massive sound here, the ambience in this preset isn't from the room from Sound City. It's from some reverb effects. So let me break that down for you here. This is just the kit. Okay. So we have two send effects in Addictive Drums 2. Let me mute those out and you'll see a lot goes away. Okay. Now let's mute the room. There's still a feeling of some space around it, but that's because of this drum crush bus. Listen to this by itself. That is that drum crush parallel compression distorted bus. And if I take that away, along with the different ambient elements, just listen to how tiny this kit sounds. Super dry, super plain. Let me solo up the room so you can hear what that sounds like. Now that's a nice room, but it's mixed in pretty low, actually. It's more these ambient effects, these send effects, which are really doing the trick. So let's turn these back on and solo them up. Here's the top one. And all that's being sent to this is the snare and the toms. Let's take it to a section where the toms are in and you can kind of hear, just barely hear them in there. Yeah, you can barely hear the low resonance. But that's a massive plate kind of sound. That's a big part of the snare. Without it. With. That's a huge part of the snare. Plates sound really nice on snares a lot of the time. And then we have this other ambience, which is down here. It says it's a hall, but listen to what the character of this is. And we've they have sent the kick as well as the snare into that. It's more like a thumpy kind of a chamber kind of a sound. So all of this is to say that one of the big things, one of the big features that attracted me to this drum kit was the big, spacious, ambient sound that it had to it. And that would not have worked in a very, very dense arrangement. I wanted to give the arrangement room enough space to allow that ambience to shine through. And if we come over here to the middle of this section here, listen to how I, I give room in terms of what's playing and what's not playing for the snare, the sound of the plate on the snare to really ring out. I just wanted that to be audible. I didn't want to cover it up. So yeah, so definitely keep that in mind. Don't just slap on a delay or a reverb or a whole bunch of those in your mix and hope that you're going to be able to hear their character if you didn't arrange the song in such a way to leave space for them. And when you select those delays and reverbs and what have you, try to think about them as much as the instruments and think about making sure that they have a personality as well, whether it's that they're a little lo-fi, that some of them are really narrow and mono, some of them are really wide. Whatever character you want to give to that sound, try to think of those ambient elements, your delays and reverbs, as instruments and mix them as such and give them their own personality. 
Okay, so we've talked about a couple of the elements here. I want to share a few more. So on top of the string machines, which again is playing quarter notes, I layered this electric grand piano from Addictive Keys. Again, another XLN product. I love their stuff very much. The, uh, Addictive Keys is a collection of samples of keyboards, and this is from their electric grand. And what this is, is a very retro instrument indeed. It's like a Yamaha CP series, like a CP70 or CP80 electric grand piano. It's like an electromechanical piano, famously used by the likes of Holland Oates, Billy Joel, Genesis. And so it has a real retro sound. But I layered it playing much more sparsely than the string machines, just playing those whole notes. So let's listen to it by itself first, and then I'll add in the string machines. You can see how they play off each other. And again, it's got some wonderful chorusing from a Roland Dimension D. It has some nice noise on it, on the master. Let me mute that. Bring it back. A little bit of hiss. It just has a great lo-fi quality to it. It's also kind of a filtered sound. And so again, selecting sounds with personality so that in your sparse arrangement, everything really stands up as its own interesting, unique character. And those two parts together sound really good together. There's just a couple more things to talk about here, and in particular, these purple tracks are what I like to call the ear candy. And this is a, um, a preset from a group of... There's a collection of massive sound libraries from a producer. I think his name... I'm going to mispronounce it, I'm afraid, but it's either Go Go I or Go Goi. It's G-O-G-O-I, and all of their sounds are available on ADSR sounds as well. But they have like four volumes of Glo-Fi. They call it Glo-Fi or Chill Wave presets for Massive. And this is a pad from, from there. However, I didn't use it as a pad. I used it more as dyads, synth dyads, and they sound like this by themselves. And those are just to sort of accent and highlight what else is going on with the chords. And they have a beautiful, this part rather has a beautiful reverb on it. Massive's reverb built in is really nice actually, and capable of sounding super huge. So let's turn off the reverb and you'll hear that that is a major component of this sound. It's like a totally different thing, right? Like it's like a pluck. So throw on that big, huge reverb, which has a lot of size and density to it, and it sounds expansive. Beautiful, right? And to complement that even further, I um, I haven't talked about this in too many videos, but I will here. My philosophy for using pre-recorded samples and loops in my music is that I do use them, but I use them very sparingly. Pretty much every song will have at least one or two, but almost never more than that. And the types of elements I add with, with loops and samples that I don't play or sequence or program or compose myself are usually just things that I can't otherwise do. So sometimes it'll be like a percussion ensemble, like for things like shakers and tambourines. I like to use loops for those sometimes, or conga is a different percussion, or just sound effects, uh, sweeps and intros and outros and those types of things. And so what I did for this is I wanted another piece of ear candy, something very ambient, and I found this vocal sample. with a lot of sustain, a lot of decay, a big sense of space. And I chopped it up. Here's another portion of it. And for this, this is one of my secret weapon plugins that I use uh, specifically for this purpose. This is the Noise plugin, N-O-I-I-Z. And what it is, is it's a subscription where you are allowed access to just an ever-expanding set of sample packs and sound libraries 
And pretty much anything you could ever want is in here. And instead of going out and buying pack after pack, and maybe you spend 15 bucks on a sample pack of vocals, for example, just because you need it for one tune. Instead, this is sort of like grab what you need when you need it. You can download them direct to your hard drive, keep them. And so, yeah, this worked out really nicely in the context of this mix. Let's hear the keys and the ear candy together and listen for the sense of space around this. You can just hear that wonderful decay there. And combined with the drums, it sounds great. The last element here I want to talk about is the melody. And just like with the predecessor to this song, like I mentioned, this is sort of a sequel to my tune, After Hours, the melody is played by this UVX80. And this is another UVI soft synth. In this case, what this is, is it's based on the Akai AX80, which was an eight voice analog synth from 1984. Wonderful sounds in here, and specifically these bell sounds, so check this out. And just like with the other elements, I tried to leave ample space within here to let the ambience and the other uh, instruments in the arrangement ring out. So it's a very simple melody, but um, that was conscious. I really tried to make it sparse, but also memorable. So yeah, so those are all the elements in this tune so far. And let's go ahead and just listen to the last little bit here so you can hear everything together. And then I'm gonna talk to you just for another moment about how I might finish this and just recap the lessons from today. So let's start it back here toward the end. Yeah, so it all came together quite nicely, and I think it wouldn't have come together quite as nicely if I had just tried to throw in everything in the kitchen sink instead of being deliberate about using few elements, keeping things simple, but with the notion in mind that doing so will allow me to highlight the space in the song, both across time and leaving ample space from the bottom to the top of the frequency spectrum, and also give me a chance to be really selective and purposes about the sounds that I chose and making sure they all have a unique timbre and a unique personality. So again, that's the main takeaway I'd like you to take from today's Work in Progress Wednesday video, which is just that simplicity is super powerful, but to go a little bit deeper, here are a couple of the reasons why. It allows you to leave that space, make sure every element has its own personality, and then when they stand up on the soundstage, so to speak, it's not crowded, they get their own moment in the spotlight, and they're interesting characters, each sound, including the ambiences, is an interesting character that the audience wants to get to know a little bit better. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, my friend. And if you did like this, please feel free to give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. That way it will be saved in your liked videos collection. And please also consider subscribing because here at The Ghost Mall, I'm always trying to come up with new videos to share with you about everything retro wave and about music production and songwriting in general and how I approach it. So please subscribe if that sounds interesting to you. And uh, yeah, just as for me, I'm going to go back to this tune, and there are two major things that I want to finish. One is that, as you can tell right now, it's just a single chord progression. And I've enjoyed sort of trying to make that interesting over the course of the song by changing up the arrangement and bringing things in and dropping things out. But I always like to have at least an A and a B section if I can, so I'll probably come up with an additional B segment with a different chord progression and melody, at least for a bridge. And then I'm going to add a maximum of three more elements to this to make it sort of comparable to After Hours, the tune that preceded it. I might add an additional percussion element and maybe in the B section, a different instrument to play the melody, something like that. But 
we'll see. So please stay tuned if you're interested in this. I think I'll put a link to the SoundCloud version of this, the work in progress, if you'd like to check it out there. And until next time, please stay tuned. Keep it retro. Be good to one another and be well. And I'll be back with another video soon and hopefully the finished version of this tune, Reflections. Take it easy, guys.